Welcome to an overview of the On the Agenda workshop series. This series is available to you at no cost, compliments of Canada Life, and you can use them in English and French for any of the roles that you might have in facilitating intact teams. The awareness series is really meant for working teams to be brought together. And the conversations that they're brought together on are the psychosocial factors that are named in the National Standard of Canada on Psychological Health and Safety in the Workplace and in Guarding Minds at Work, which is a free tool to assess psychological health and safety in your workplace. So the On the Agenda workshop series is broken up into two categories. The Creating Awareness series is really a team building workshop where you're going to bring them together to talk about a specific psychosocial factor and you see them listed here and you're asking them to give you ideas about how we could improve it for our team the creating change series is for decision makers and policy makers to be able to take the information that came from the various teams and look at the extent to which they want to change policies and processes in the organization. So I'm going to walk you through just one of the creating awareness series and I've chosen some of the slides to help you understand what you're getting and what the approach is. So the one that we're looking at today is putting civility and respect on the agenda. And what the process is, is first we review what a psychologically safe discussion is, both for this particular um, workshop that you're hosting, but also in general, what does that mean? We define civility and respect as it is defined in Guarding Minds at Work and recognize what it looks like using the descriptions that are in the Guarding Minds at Work employee survey. Then we ask folks to list words that in their mind embody civili civility and respect, and then they are to attach specific measurable actions that they themselves can take that would demonstrate civility and respect. And then they look at our criteria for making meaningful change. And I'll go over that criteria with you, but just to let you know, it's so that what you end up with is affordable, is actionable, and is effective in improving the psychosocial factor that you're looking at. And then they get to choose one action to recommend that you start with. So the psychologically safe discussions is early on so that we know what that means and how we're going to do it. We look at the various things that Guarding Minds at Work describes as what civility and respect is in the workplace so that everybody's starting from a shared understanding of what we're looking for, what we're trying to achieve. And then we ask them about words. So we've given them a few here that they might think um, embodies civility and respect, but we allow them to go with any other words that they feel make sense to them in their unique work environment on their unique team. And then we ask them for those actions that demonstrate the words so that we're not looking for um, pie in the sky kind of motherhood statements like let's all be nice. We would say define nice. How would you measure it? What does it look like? What does it sound like? So that we get something that is practical. And then we take them through the criteria. Is it observable? Because if it's just about an internal thought process, we can't observe that. Is it measurable? Can we actually say this was done this many times or to this extent? Because if we can't measure it, we can't know if we're successful with it. Is it reasonable? Is it reasonable given human rights? Is it reasonable given organizational policy? Is it reasonable given work demands? And is it relevant to your particular work environment? And then they get to vote. 
on the action that they feel is best to implement right now. And we're asking them about what potential challenges. Let's talk about that before it actually happens. Okay, are there any questions about the on the agenda workshop materials? Uh, we do have a question from Sarah Jenner. Uh, with all the different psychosocial factors, how many would you recommend an organization focus on in a given year? And how do you decide on which ones to focus on? Uh, uh, for instance, uh, should it be by location, department, or by teams? Great, great question. And, and it's a complex answer because, I mean, how many in a year? That's pretty simple. Not too many because the more that you do, um, the more pressure it puts on people and the less likely they're going to adopt or commit to any of them. So we'd like to do one and then integrate it into the way we do work and then add another one. Um, generally speaking, I would say that's not more than one a quarter, but um, for every different team, there may be different expectations, but I wouldn't go with more than that because it gets difficult. Now, where there's some overlap is often when an organization is really striving towards being a psychologically healthy and safe organization, they may have some changes related to psychosocial factors that they want done organization wide. But that doesn't mean that a team can't also do something that's more relevant to that particular team. The organization wide strategies are great, but individual teams have different needs and often um, those needs would get missed if it was only large scale change. So you may be doing two at once because you're doing the organizational change and you're doing the team level change, but I would keep them um, to a manageable rate and make sure that the first one becomes embedded into the way you do business. And if it doesn't, then I would revisit that and find a different approach to that same psychosocial factor rather than just saying that didn't work. Now let's do a different one. So it's really important that each of the changes becomes part of the organizational culture, the team culture, and how we interact on a day-to-day -day basis. So thanks, Sarah, for that very complex question. <laughs> Any other questions? We have a question from Brian Hansel, and he writes, you mentioned getting the input from employees to help get back to the makers or keepers of the stories. I find that incredibly important in working with organizations today. No one wants to see policies shoved at them, they want to be part of the solution discussion. Getting feedback from greater population gets much better results than forcing a policy. Yeah, so Brian, you're absolutely right. And in fact, the national standard on psychological health and safety requires meaningful and ongoing participation and influence to psychological health and safety initiatives from all employees. So they recognize how critical it really is but from an employer's standpoint, you can invest a lot of time, a lot of money, a lot of effort in trying to implement psychological health and safety only to fail because it's not meeting the needs of the employees. It's not um, engaging them in what has to happen. And because psychological health and safety really comes down to the way we interact with each other, it's important to engage union, employees, all stakeholders right from the beginning and throughout the process. So great question, Brian, thank you. Any others? I think we have time for one more. Uh, there's another question from Sarah Jenner. In relation to the creating awareness and creating change presentations, are there actual items that workplace strategies suggests upfront to help those use these pieces? Yes, so the workshop creating awareness series is intended to tap into what employees want. And so it really is more blue sky thinking, but even there, there are um, on our website, evidence-based actions for psychological health and safety broken down by the individual psychosocial factors. 
in both the creating awareness and in the creating change, we ask that you consider those because they come from the research on what will actually make a difference. I personally think we should have chocolate every afternoon and it will be great for my psychological health and safety, but the evidence doesn't back it up. And so we really say, look to the evidence in making your decisions, but there's lots of ideas that if you don't have time for a workshop, if you don't have time to do an assessment, that you can start looking at those things and incorporating them into the way that you do business right now. So that's evidence-based actions from our psychological health and safety. Thanks a lot, everyone, for your questions and for your time. And I hope you will be able to begin to use the On the Agenda workshop materials. And remember that everything that we've talked about is available for free in both English and French. You can download them all at WorkplaceStrategiesForMentalHealth.com.